Now that Genshin Impact has released its biggest update adding the new region Inazuma 2.0, many new players are starting their adventure in Teyvat. To those who don't already know, Genshin Impact is an open-world fantasy adventure game set in a world called Teyvat that brings exciting combat, engaging story-driven gameplay, amazing music, and a large variety in regions and playable characters. Whether you are a new or returning player, there is a lot of depth and complexity to Genshin Impact, and understanding the game and its mechanics can prove to be a challenge. The goal of this video is to give you confidence in your understanding of the game, and to prepare you to succeed in Genshin Impact. Please make use of the timestamps if there is a specific section that you need the most help in, or if you want to skip a section you are already familiar with. In order, I am going to be going over terminology, currencies, elements, team building, ranking up, resin, objectives, and wishing. There is a lot to take in so it can be overwhelming at first, but after you've seen the whole video and gotten a bit of experience in the game itself, this will all feel simple. First, I will show you some important Genshin terminology. If you aren't familiar with any of these, I recommend you pause the video. I will explain the most important and commonly used currencies that you will need to know. Mora is the common currency that is used as money. You will need Mora for almost everything in the game, such as buying things, upgrading things, and even converting things. Experience books are used to level up your character, which will raise some of the stats, as well as unlock some passive helpful abilities. However, at some level intervals, you will need different materials to ascend your character, which allows them to continue leveling up. Primo gems are the most valuable currency in the game, because they allow you to buy wishes, which are used to obtain new game-changing characters and weapons. There are currently seven different elemental types in the game. Pyro, Hydro, Electro, Cryo, Animo, Geo, and Dendro. Some people in Teyvat have received elemental abilities tied to an element through an object called a vision. These visions are given by the gods to those with great ambition. Playable characters and enemies can be any of these elemental types, and some can even create shields made up of one of these elements. When two different elements interact or touch each other, this causes an elemental reaction. For example, Pyro and Cryo cause melt for bonus damage. You can use these elemental reactions to your advantage to deal bonus damage to the enemy, lower their defenses, or create shields with Geo. Elemental reactions are an important part of battling, so use them to your advantage to make the game a lot easier. Having different combinations of characters that use a specific type of element on your team can also give you different resonance bonuses. For example, having two Pyro characters on your team will give you a stat buff of 25% attack. Because each team can have up to four characters, it's important to fill different roles between the characters on your team. It's usually best to have one to two DPS characters on a team, with the rest being supports. Supports can do many different things, like healing your characters, shielding, crowd control, applying elements, or providing utility to buff your characters. Aside from your one to two characters that DPS, you will need one to two supports that can provide healing or shielding. Any remaining character slots should be used by someone who can provide buffs, crowd control, or elemental application to empower your DPS with elemental reactions. An easy beginner team that I could recommend, for example, is Zhongling, Fischl, Barbara, and then Traveler. Zhongling would be a DPS with her pyro elemental burst dealing high damage, while Fischl would apply a lot of electro elements with her elemental skill to boost Zhongling's damage with elemental reactions. Barbara would be useful for healing your team, and the Hydra she applies is also a good tool for causing more elemental reactions. Having a fourth character like the Traveler can help add a bit more damage while giving you some crowd control to keep your enemies together. Once you get some experience matching different roles and elements, team building can be very easy and fun. Try to keep your main DPS that does the most damage as your highest level character with a couple supports following closely behind. Each individual character can make the most use out of different weapons and artifacts, but you won't have much access to your best gear until you reach high ranks, so don't worry too much about having the best build. 
Almost all the best weapons you can get for your characters come from wishing, which will cost you a hefty sum of primo gems. Let's talk about what beginners should do to progress, as well as what goals you should work towards. Like I said before, Adventure Rank is the main level of your account and it will be the ultimate factor in what you can and cannot access in Genshin Impact. Your Adventure Rank starts at 1 and can go up to 60. The main method to rank up is to complete any kind of quests. The quest menu is your friends and you can navigate to your objectives in this menu as well as read what you were supposed to do. The quests that are higher up on your list in the quest menu tend to be much more important to the story and they give greater rewards. Throughout your gameplay, you will complete missions in your Adventurer's Handbook. Completing these missions will get you a lot of quick experience towards ranking up when you are early on. The Adventurer's Handbook is also a helpful tool for locating different enemies and domains you will need for rewards on your map, so be sure to check it out often. You will eventually start raising your world level when ranking up. This makes enemies in the world slightly higher level, but it also increases all of your rewards when defeating enemies. Your world level is at 0 until you reach rank 20, which puts you at world level 1. Every 5 ranks after that will raise your world level by 1, such as world level 2 at rank 25. So you know your own goals and what's important to unlock, here is a list of important milestones you will achieve while ranking up. At Adventuring 12 you'll be able to do 4 daily commissions every day. These will give you a renewable source of adventuring experience points to rank up, as well as valuable primo gems. There will also be leyline objectives you can collect for experience books and mora. At adventuring 14, you unlock character expeditions at the Adventurer's Guild. You will receive the most efficient rewards when you set your expedition to the maximum time. I also highly recommend the expeditions that give you ore as a reward. Adventuring 16 unlocks multiplayer. Some of the activities you can do with your friends include exploring your world, challenging bosses and multiplayer domains together, and many different multiplayer limited time events. At Adventuring 20, you unlock the Battle Pass and Spiral Abyss. The Battle Pass is a good tool for earning free rewards like Acquaint Fate Wishes through simple missions that you can complete daily and weekly. Cooking 20 eggs or other meals and forging 20 weapon enhancement crystals of the blacksmith each week will give you some easy Battle Pass levels. The Spiral Abyss is a long dungeon that gives you very large rewards like Primo Gems, but it will get progressively more challenging with each floor. Once you complete Floor 3 for the first time, you will get the Pyro 4 star character Zhongling for free. In the higher ranks, when you are more geared up, you can challenge higher floors for more rewards. Just keep in mind that you will need to use two teams of four on each floor starting at Floor 5, so plan on having eight different characters eventually upgraded. At Adventure Rank 25, you will unlock the Reputation System in Liyue and Mondstadt. You can hunt down many bosses, do world quests, and help out the locals with small tasks to increase your reputation level. Leveling up your reputation with the city unlocks different handy tools and eventually a skin for your glider. At Adventure Rank 30, you unlock one of the most exciting parts of the game. You get to sail to Inazuma and explore the new region. At Adventure Rank 35, you will be able to do a quest that unlocks the Serena Teapot. This teapot is a player housing system where you can make and place furniture and decorate the interior and exterior of your personal resort. You will be able to earn a decent amount of primo gems and other valuable resources by making progress in your teapot, so I encourage you to put some time into progressing it when you unlock it. At Adventuring 45, you will be guaranteed to receive a 5 star maximum rarity artifact to put into one of your character's 5 different artifact slots in any artifact domain. There are a lot of reasons why this milestone is so significant and why you shouldn't waste too much of your time trying to collect new artifacts before Adventuring 45. To explain this, I will talk about Resin next. Resin has a lot of different uses and it is one of the most limiting factors in your progression since it is used to collect almost any resource, so make sure you are spending it wisely. You automatically receive one resin every 8 minutes. This means you will receive 180 resin every 24 hours, but be careful to check your storage capacity twice a day since you have a maximum storage of 160. I recommend raising your reputation level in Liyue to unlock a blueprint that lets you craft condensed resin. Condensed resin is an item that takes away 40 of your resin when you craft it, and then you can simply use it in place of using 20 resin later on, but you get double the rewards, so you don't have to worry about going over the 160 capacity. 
You will also sometimes receive fragile resin which can be used to instantly give you 60 resin. Mora and experience books can be collected at gold and blue leyline objectives on the map using 20 resin each time. Domains are mini dungeons on the map that give you artifacts to equip on your characters for stat boosts and other resources. Certain sets of artifacts can only be obtained through these domains and you can only collect the rewards by spending 20 resin or condensed resin. Bosses that give you materials to ascend characters cost 40 resin to collect. The weekly bosses that give high rewards and can only be collected once a week cost 30 resin for your first 3 rewards and then 60 resin for any further weekly bosses you collect. It is super important that you remember to do all of the weekly bosses once every week. The higher your adventure rank and world level are, the higher quality of rewards you receive from spending resin. For lower rank players, I highly recommend putting most of your resin each day into the bosses that cost 40 resin because this will set you up for success in the later phases of the game without wasting much resources. Anything you spend resin on will give you small amounts of adventure rank experience points. Spending your resin on anything is okay in the early game, except when it comes to domains that give artifacts. Artifacts are very important to maximizing your character's strengths, but when it comes to collecting artifacts and domains, you will have a very low reward efficiency until you reach Adventure Rank 45. This is because you will have a guaranteed 100% chance to receive a maximum rarity 5-star artifact every time you spend 20 resin starting at Adventure Rank 45. If you use condensed resin for double rewards, this means you are guaranteed to get two of the five star artifacts every time you collect rewards. At Adventure Rank 40, you unlock the chance to get a five star artifact, but it is not guaranteed. If you try to spend your resin on artifacts before Adventure Rank 40, you will not be getting the maximum rarity artifacts, and by the time you reach late game, almost all of your progression artifacts will be meaningless, unless they are five star maximum rarity artifacts. 4-star artifact sets like Gladiator's Finale, The Exile, and Instructor are not very difficult to get. Even without doing domains, they are solid options because of the great set bonuses you receive for equipping 2 or 4 of them. So I recommend using those early game until you can reach higher ranks. Fragile Resin is given very sparingly the later you get into the game, so it's super important to hold on to most of your Fragile Resin until you reach around Adventuring 45. You'll eventually start encountering an issue where you aren't high enough adventuring to complete any quests, and you don't have any missions you can easily turn in for your adventurer's handbook. Doing your daily commissions and spending your resin will gradually raise your adventure rank, but there are other things you can do if you don't want to wait around. Besides ranking up, there are a lot of important parts of the game that you need to progress in. The first thing you should check is the events tab to see if there are any limited time events, because the rewards are usually very valuable, and sometimes exclusive to that event. Your next priority should be unlocking as many statues and waypoints as you can on the map. This will not only make it faster to do quests later on, but you will find a lot of chests and other rewards along the way that will help you slowly rank up and give you primo gems. Statues allow you to heal your team so you don't have to cook food, and they increase the stamina bar. By offering Animoculus or Geoculus to the statues, you can permanently increase your stamina bar, as well as receive primo gems and adventure rank experience. Animoculus and Geoculus are hidden around the map, and there are hundreds total, so it can be hard to collect them all. This is why I would advise that you look up an interactive map of Genshin Impact to keep track of the ones you find if you plan on increasing your stamina bar to the max. Most of your Primo Gems will usually come from daily commissions or limited time events, so make sure to not skip out on them. The biggest advice I can give to anyone who isn't experienced in Genshin Impact is to spend your Primo Gems on intertwined fate wishes for the character event wish banner. You can use banners to spend wishes which will earn you new characters and weapons. The standard wish banner uses acquaint fates and is good for getting random 5-star characters and 5-star weapons, but it cannot give any of the event 5-star weapons or characters that are generally much better. The next banner is the weapon banner that uses intertwined fates and changes to different weapons every few weeks. The weapon banner can give you two different event 5-star weapons that are currently featured, as well as a rate up for a couple featured 4-star weapons, but it's impossible to get any kind of 5-star character. The last banner I want to talk about is the character event wish banner, which also uses intertwined fates and changes characters every few weeks. This banner will feature one event 5-star character and three rate up 4-star characters. Picking up duplicates of the 4-star rate up characters is great for getting stronger constellations to boost the power of your team. The 5 star event characters that you get from these banners tend to be the most powerful and fun things you can own in the entire game. 
Now that you know what all of the banners offer, you should know why the weapon banner is a waste, why you should never buy Quaint Fates, and why you should always use your Primo Gems for the Intertwined Fate Wishes on the Character Event Wish banner. All of the banners in this game have a pity system. Pity allows you to get a guaranteed 5 star if you were unlucky enough to not get one after a set amount of wishes. The standard wish banner will give you a random guaranteed 5 star character or weapon once you've wished 90 times without receiving one. Unfortunately, there is no way to guarantee a specific character or weapon that you want, and you can earn anything from this banner on other banners as well, so this is why I do not recommend buying a Quaint Fate Wishes. The Character Event Wish Banner has a much more favorable pity system. Like the standard Wish Banner, you will get a guaranteed 5-star character if you go up to 90 wishes without receiving one. Once you receive a 5-star character, there is a 50% chance that it will be the featured 5-star event character on the front of the banner. If you get a standard 5-star character instead of the featured event 5-star character, the next time you get a 5-star, it is guaranteed to be the exact 5-star event character that is featured on the banner. If Pity will give you a 5-star at a maximum of 90 wishes, this means that even the unluckiest person will get the exact event 5-star they wanted after getting 180 wishes, since you will reach Pity twice. For example, let's pretend that you are wishing on the Ayaka character event wish banner. If you are unlucky and spend 89 wishes without getting a single 5-star, then the next is a guaranteed 5-star no matter what. There is a 50% chance that it will be Ayaka. Let's say that you lose that 50% chance on the next wish and get Jean instead. This means that if you were to keep wishing 89 more times without getting any 5-stars, the next wish will give you Ayaka guaranteed because you lost the last 50-50. If you save up enough Primo Gems or Intertwined Fates, you are sure to get the character you want. Even if you end up not reaching the required wishes for a guaranteed 5-star before the character event wish banner ends, your progress will be saved for the next one. Now that I've explained the pity system for the character event wish banner, I will compare it to the weapon banner. You can receive a guaranteed 5-star weapon on the banner at 80 wishes, instead of 90 like the character event wish banner, but because there are two featured event weapons at once, you can select which of the two weapons you want, and this can take three attempts to be the event 5-star weapon you were working towards instead of two attempts. This means that you can spend up to 240 wishes before getting the event weapon you want, while the character event wish banner only requires up to 180 wishes before getting the event character you want. Also, a 5-star event character will almost always be better than a 5-star event weapon. This is why you can never go wrong in spending all of your primo gems on the character event wish banner with intertwined fates. In the Paimon's Bargain Shop, you should usually spend all of your Masterless Star Glitter on Intertwined Fates for 5 each. You should spend all of your Masterless Star Dust on the 5 Intertwined Fates, and then any excess Masterless Star Dust can be spent on the 5 Acquaint Fates. Paimon's Bargains will refresh its stock every month, so make sure you get your free 5 Intertwined Fates and up to 5 of the Acquaint Fates with your Masterless Star Dust each month. I highly recommend you do not spend your Masterless Star Glitter or Star Dust on anything else unless a character comes up that you've really wanted. The only in-game purchase I can recommend is the Welkin Moon Pass. Buying Genesis Crystals is the same as buying Primo Gems. It will cost up to over 300 US dollars for just a single 5-star character or weapon, so I would avoid it at all costs. The Welkin Moon Pass is just 5 US dollars and lets you earn up to 2,700 Primo Gems and 300 Genesis Crystals by logging in each day for a month. If you are spending money on anything in the game and you don't own the Balkan Moon Pass, you are probably wasting your money because this can have up to 5 times the value of just buying Genesis Crystals. Now you know all of the basics of Genshin Impact and you should be prepared to make the best of your journey. To quickly summarize some of the most important things you should take from this video, focus on using your quest menu to rank up. Unlock as much of the map as you can. Use most of your resident bosses when you are early on, and only use your primo gems to get intertwined fates for the character event wish banner. While there was a lot to go over, with some practice it will all become common knowledge. I hope you learned a lot and you feel more confident in your gameplay. If you have any questions at all, be sure to leave them down in the comments section below and I'll be happy to answer them. Be sure to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful and if you want to see some of my other fun Genshin content or my future guides. Thank you all for watching!